Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is about the tertiary structure of proteins. Before we get to the video, please make sure to subscribe to our channel as this helps us out a lot. Okay, let's get to the video. Proteins are complex macromolecules made up of amino acids. Their structure can be described at different levels. The different levels include the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures. Let's consider tertiary structures. Tertiary structures refer to the overall three-dimensional arrangement of the protein's polypeptide chain. Tertiary structures give a protein its unique and specific 3D shape, and it is crucial for the protein's function. As you may have noticed by now, I repeated that structure equals function, and that is key to not in biology as well as biochemistry, especially in the context of proteins. Structure equals function. If something disrupts structure, that disrupts function. Tertiary structures is the result of interactions between the side chain of amino acids. That means tertiary structures result due to interactions between the R group. Interactions between R groups can be one of four types, hydrophobic interactions, hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, and disulfide bonds. Hydrophobic interactions are between nonpolar amino acid side chains. Nonpolar amino acid side chains tend to cluster together to minimize exposure to water. Hydrogen bonds are formed between polar side chains, and on the other hand, ionic bonds occur between charged amino acid side chains. And finally, disulfide bonds form covalent bonds between sulfur atoms of two cysteine residues. It forms a disulfide bridge. Tertiary structures can also be classified as globular structures and fibrous structures. Globular tertiary structures refer to proteins that are compact and are rounded in shape. This type of structure is common in enzymes and many soluble proteins. Fibrous tertiary structures refer to proteins with elongated or fibrous looking shapes. These types of proteins often have a structural role. For example, collagen is a protein that has a fibrous tertiary structure. When it comes to tertiary structures, prosthetic groups are something that needs to be discussed. Some proteins require non-amino acid components called prosthetic groups to achieve their complete tertiary structure and therefore perform its function. Examples of prosthetic groups include metal ions or coenzymes. Tertiary structures also determines the location and conformation of the functional site on a protein. These sites are often involved in binding to other molecules, catalyzing biochemical reactions, or other specific types of functions. When we talk about proteins, denaturation of proteins is something that comes up often. When we refer to denaturation of a protein, tertiary structures are what gets disrupted. Tertiary structures can be disrupted by extreme conditions such as high temperature, changes in pH, or the presence of certain chemicals. This disruption is what is known as denaturation, and it leads to the loss of a protein's biological activity. And that concludes this video. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Bye!